Welcome to Assetto Corsa Competizione Basics. My name is PowerQ and in this series we're gonna take a look at some of the basics of ACC to get the most enjoyment out of the game. This series is meant for sim racing beginners or anyone who wants some basic info on Assetto Corsa Competizione. So subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. In this episode, we'll discuss why it's important to choose a main car, the benefits of sticking with that one car, and how to choose that car. So in ACC, you're able to choose from a variety of GT3 cars, all with different characteristics, quirks, weaknesses, and strengths. All cars are competitive, and there's not really a best overall car. So you gotta find one that fits your driving style, a car in which you can comfortably get a good pace going and not spin out in every lap. Now you might be wondering why is it important to choose a main car to focus on and stick with? Well every car has its strengths, its weaknesses and little quirks you gotta get familiar with to be fast. And to be competitive you gotta know what your car can do, how far you can push it, how to approach the corners, the braking points and all that stuff. And if you're changing cars every race, you won't get familiar with all these things. For example, some cars require precise throttle control coming out of a corner, while with others you can just pretty much push down on the pedal and it will fly. And I know, setups also come into play here, but we'll leave that for another video. Driving the same car for a longer time will help you understand it, and you can better understand what it's asking from you when it starts to act up. You'll be familiar with the handling, how to tackle the corners and how to handle the straights. This will all be second nature to you and you won't have to think about all the inputs all the time. It will just feel natural to you. When you've reached the point where you feel confident in the car and you can blindly trust it, that's when you can start focusing on real racing. Now your attention can shift from controlling the car to following the right racing line, hitting your marks, looking for opponents mistakes and openings in their racing line. And to quote an ancient Japanese proverb, when you are one with the car, the river of racing flows freely. So long story short, if you change your car too often, you'll just have a harder time controlling each car to their maximum ability. And you probably won't be as fast as you would have been if you'd have stuck with one main car. Now that we've got that out of the way, the first thing we need to do is find you that car. There's two ways to choose a car. The first is my way. You choose a car you like without really knowing anything about the internal. And you know that it's looking cool as hell and has Godzilla as a nickname and then you just drive it until you get the hang of it. And then there's the second way. That's the educated way involving science and opinions you found on the online. The scientific way to choose a car is to jump into practice mode on a track like Brands Hatch or Misano and drive a few laps around the track with each car. Why those tracks? Well, they've got a good mix of corners and straight bits, so you can really know what strengths and weaknesses your car has. And don't mess with the setups just yet. And of course, this sounds pretty boring and tedious, and it would be. And that's why I've selected two cars that are pretty good starting points just for you. For the front engine stability lovers, we've got the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. And for the mid-engine twerky boys, we got the Audi R8 LMS Evo. In my opinion, the Aston Martin is very stable, it handles well and is one of the easiest front-engine cars to drive in ACC. That's why it's a great starting point for someone new to ACC. Try it for about 10 laps around Brands Hatch or Misano and see how it feels. If you're spinning out of control, can't seem to get clean laps going or you're just having trouble controlling it, stick with it for a while until you get the hang of ACC's physics. If you like the stability of front engine cars, but think the Aston Martin is a little too safe for your taste, try the other front engine cars. If you think this car is super boring, try the Audi R8. And if you love driving it, well, keep on driving it. The Audi R8 is one of the most stable and easy to handle mid-engine cars in ACC. And that's my opinion, of course. 
That's why I think it's a great starting point if you want to choose a mid-engine car. When you've driven about 10 laps, you should be able to tell if you like the car. You think the Audi feels a little safe? Well then try the Porsche. Try the other mid-engine cars if you can handle the Audi, but it doesn't feel right. If you can't lap around the circuit without spinning, you might want to pick a front-engine car. And of course, again, if you love the handling of the Audi, just stick with it. Now you should be able to make an educated guess on which car fits your driving style. But don't let this discourage you from driving the car you've been eyeballing for a while. Oh baby. The important thing is to stick to one car until you feel confident and competitive while driving. I chose the Nissan GTR because I like GTRs and in the beginning I was terrible, spinning out of control at every corner, but I stuck with it and now I only crash into 6 people every race, so don't let your dreams be dreams. If you stick with a car, your driving style will be influenced by the car and you'll probably get the hang of it after a good few hours. The last thing I wanted to touch on is when you're getting to know a new car and you're also fairly new to ACC, try racing it offline against AI. This way you can learn to race it in a safer environment and nobody in the chat will go off on you. And that's it. Let me know what you think of the video, is it helpful, got tips of your own, leave them in the comments down below, don't hog all the tips boys and subscribe for more ACC basics coming up.